Makes the word moon. Good girl. I think there's been a long standing controversy, and I have to confess to being a skeptic myself until really quite recently. Um, in terms of phonics not really being well enough understood. So I think there's been a big job that we've had to do to persuade people of the value of phonics, but help them understand how to teach it. I've been at this school for just over three years. I was the fourth head in one year. So the school had had a real period of instability. Uh, and consequently, uh, standards were very low at school across the board. So in reception, we have a very fast, rigorous programme, as recommended by the Rose Report, that we should start teaching phonics early so that that tool for reading and writing is embedded straight away. Our phonic ability and reading and writing ability were really low quite a few years ago. And we've now found that as we've started the phonic system and the way we teach the phonics in a very systematic way, it's now had a knock-on effect throughout the years and the reading and writing levels and the creativity has really risen. So it has made a big impact on our school. At the very beginning of reception year, I keep all the children um, in the class with me um, because we, we, we learn all the single sounds and we recap um, all the sounds that they may have learned previously. Some children come into reception knowing quite a few sounds. Some children come into reception knowing no sounds whatsoever. So you have to kind of find out where they are find out what they know already. So for the children that know some of the sounds, we are recapping. And for some of the children that haven't got a clue about the sounds and are learning them, we are teaching them the sounds. So it kind of works hand in hand. As the year's gone on, it's towards the end of the year in the summer term, I split the children that still need to consolidate their single sounds, which most of them know. You're going to go off Miss Naomiki and do your phonics. OK, well done. Good listening. The rest of you, if you are in the classroom, I want you to move forward a little bit more. The children that went off separately, they were the children that needed to consolidate learning that some of the other children have already achieved. Not every day in the week, but some of the days they get some special time really in a small group to practice what they still need to learn rather than get caught up in the class. I want to see your actions today, OK? E-R makes the sound... Uh. Lots of them make the sound... Uh. T-H makes the sound... Yes. N-G makes the sound... Ooh. Well done, good actions. U-E makes the sound... U. 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 Chrissy is using a very active phonics scheme. I, fantastic. Each letter and each sound has an action and it also has a storyline. If they are doing the sound A, they would say A, and it's and the storyline that goes with it is that somebody can't hear very well, so they're saying A. O I makes a sound. Oi, oi, shipper, oi. Oi, oi, shipper, oi. Fantastic. O O makes a sound. O O. Last one. Show me the actions. E O E O E O E O. Excellent. OK, with the sounds that they learn, the way they learn them, straight away they can start blending and segmenting them together for reading and writing and practising and applying what they've learned. So, again, it gives them that, that real satisfaction of, yes, I can do it and I can read. We're going to make the word weep. <coughs> weep. So let's do the sounds together. W e weep. Have a try. W Eep. Check your word by pointing at the letters. We're going to change one of the letters and we're going to do the word weak. 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 Well done, Thomas. We're going to make the word spoon. Tell me the sounds first. That's tricky. Well done. Spoon, have a try. Spoon. Tricky sound to hear in there. If you do this, sp sp a Spain. What sound would you need if you're going to make Spain? A. Sp 
Hey, good girl, Tatiana. You can make lots of different words with the sounds and letters that we've got today. Well done. We then did another game called Swap Shop. They had a particular word they had to keep a secret. There was another child that would have exactly the same word as them and they had to read their word. Um, and then when I said that particular word, they had to read it, stand up and swap places. If you have the word E, C, swap shop. Very good, looking at your words. If you have the word rain, rain. Well done, Marilyn, swap shop. Children don't really enjoy sitting for a long period of time. So if you can have the focus They've had their focus teaching and they give them an activity, a very short game, where they can just be as active as possible, but still learning. If you have the word b a g bug swap shop. Fantastic and finished. Willow Class, you did that very quickly today. Good reading of your words. Fantastic. At the end of every phonics session, we give them a chance to again apply um, what they've learned, but by putting it into more of a context. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to practice writing a question. Ah, uh, and particularly you, today was you. the words R and U that we had been learning, so we put that into a question. Okay. Sound that one out for me. I R makes the sound. Uh, mm. What does the question say? Are you a girl? Are you a girl? If you are a girl, put your thumb in the air. There are lots of different phonic schemes, but they all do the same job. They all work with children, still learn um, their phonics in a very fun way. Now we're all going to do the sounds together. Marilyn, are you ready? Good. It's a question, so I'm going to put a question mark. Who can tell me what this sound is? Marilyn, could you tell us? Are you a frog? If you are a frog, which is a silly question, would you like to put your thumb up? <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> You're not frog. But phonics was just the start. It needs context. What we felt was that to raise standards, what we needed to do was give children a reason to read and a reason to write and the skills to be able to do that. So making sure that they had context which really engaged them, but also looking in a very rigorous way at the skills that children needed to develop and made sure that they made progress. And we're going to think about how the characters are feeling in different parts of the story. Let's have a little look at the fox. Look at the fox. What has the fox seen? The mouse. The mouse. He's seen the mouse. And what's he thinking? I want to eat that mouse. I want to eat that mouse. Tender fox, and you've just seen a really tasty mouse. Outside the prescribed 15 minute phonics session, working with real books helps children relate their decoding skills to meaning and enjoyment. How's the snake feeling? Scared. Yeah. Show me your scared faces. <gasps> Lovely, Hannah. It's scared. The snake is scared. We're using different actions, we're using the sounds, we're everything that just builds in and just it all feeds in together. And the children really enjoy it, and so it works really well. And I think, you know, I, li I like teaching it. You know, it's not a, oh, it's, it's time for phonics. I enjoy teaching the phonics. I enjoy the sort of the actions, the very pa pacey, the very active learning style that we can use when we teach phonics. Let's like sound out nut. nut. I like mm. Well done. When we're using a real book, we can, when we're in small groups, we can look at different word, tricky words that we're learning. We can look at different sounds. What does the gruffalo begin with? So we can use, it does, it does all feed in. Audrey, can you show us the sign for g, 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 Well done. And what's the next sound in good? G, And what sound do we need for d? Show me the sound, the action. Brilliant. Oh! Success in reception encouraged phonics planning across the school. But it's not all plain sailing when they get to year one. We're pushing children. There are always some children who um, 
come up from reception and most of them know their sound and there are just there are always some who just come back after summer holidays and they've forgotten the whole thing and they're the kind of they want they're the ones who are working with the teaching assistant and they're kind of every day kind of building it up trying to get them to the level where they need to be so it's just kind of lots of practice lots of support for them what about this sound <laughs> The three year one classes pool all their children and then regroup them by ability for their phonics sessions. Year one is split into um, six different ability groups um, based on which kind of sounds they know, whether they can write them down, whether they can write sentences, whether they can read certain words. We put them into these different groups. Good girl, keep the cold with you, that's good. Wow, fantastic. The next word I'm thinking about is the word goat. The goat you'd see at the farm. Goat. Fantastic. So. My group is not the top group, the one kind of below. So I'm kind of working on kind of really pushing them. I'm currently working on phase five, which is teaching them different double sounds. Sugar, sugar. Have a look at your board. Well done, Corel. that was a hard one. Bingo. Oh, you, you can't say bingo and you haven't got all of them. You have to make it lively, you have to make it exciting for them to understand and want to learn. Looked. But if you work through Looked. the phases, then you are teaching them new things. And when they've grafted it, fantastic. When they can apply it on their own, then you've got it. Venue. Today we were playing bingo using some keywords and some words that I Venue. think they'd be able to work out. I mean, I had words with um, silent letters in. I think you need to kind of push the children. If they're just sitting there just rehearsing words over and over again, it does become boring and they're not interested. Future. Bingo. Band. Let's have a look. Let's check what you have. So, fantastic, Jessica. We need to say a big well done to Jessica. Well done, Jessica. Oh dear me, such sore losers. Right, rub out your boards for me, fantastic. You can get a special stick. Phonics is essential because it encourages children to be independent when they're working out their own reading and writing skills. So you're teaching them, if they know this sound, then they can try and attempt to work out the word on their own. If you're just learning words by rote, then when you come to a word you don't know, the children don't have the strategies to be able to work it out. So it's encouraging them to be independent when they're trying to tackle the literacy side of things. So is there any conflict between systematic phonics and reading for enjoyment? I don't think any of the jolly phonic systems or the systematic phonic systems we use or letters and sounds or the CLPE um, learning through books and through stories. I don't think any of it contradicts itself. I think, if anything, it all works together quite well. I think the thing that makes people sceptical about phonics is when phonics is seen as the be-all and end-all. If you see it as the end point, I think what you end up with is with children who can bark at print rather than really engaging with language. And what phonics has to be seen as is as a tool that enables you to do the real work, I think, which is helping children become readers and writers, to love books and to love writing. And again, not becoming just a decoder of print, but somebody who can infer meaning and engage with books in a critical sense.